And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. You find there the bad shape of the Laodicean church. And I do believe that we are in the last days of the church age. And I believe we are in what many people call the Laodicean church age. And the Laodicean church was uh, was very, very weak, and they were very, uh, they were not even close to being right with God, or spiritual, or even able to be used by God. And the problem was is that they were in such bad spiritual condition and they didn't even know it. And what I see here is, uh, is that this Laodicean church at the end of the church age, it says in verse number 17, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And I want to say today that I believe the New Testament church in these last days, many of them are meeting this criteria and meeting this description. Uh, they, they've gone the way of apathy, and the way of apathy will lead to their apostasy, and their apostasy will lead to their annihilation. And because of the Laodicean church's uh, complete refusal to be what it's supposed to be, God says to them that I will spew thee out of my mouth. It says in verse 16, So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I want to say to you this, that the end days church will try to be neither nor in a world that is either or and attempt to operate in such a way that they offend no one except God. And they're trying to just be in the middle of the road on all issues. We don't want to make any ripples in the pond. We don't want to upset anybody. We don't want to, we don't want to be controversial. That's one they throw at me all the time. We don't want to be controversial. We don't want to upset anybody. And really they're trying to just be in the middle of the road. I've driven ever since I was 15 years old and I've learned something about driving. I've learned that the middle of the road is a dangerous place to drive. You need to be on one side or on the other. The middle of the road is a dangerous place to drive. It's a dangerous place to walk. And it certainly is a dangerous place to live. But that's where the Laodicean church is today. They're not trying to be hot and they're not trying to be cold. They're trying to be lukewarm in the middle. And, and really, I've heard a man preach years ago. He said, the church that makes God want to throw up. And that's what it says, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Uh, you're, you're neither nor in a world that's either or, and you're trying to live in the middle of the road, and that's the kind of church that God does not like. Can I tell you that the end times Laodicean church will be marked because they will try to be holy and try to be hip at the same time, and it just doesn't work that way. The end days church will try to do a spiritual work by carnal means, and it just doesn't work that way. Bringing in Christian rock and roll so that you can bring people to Jesus. You may as well bring in cocaine and alcohol and heroin to try to bring people to the Lord. That's wicked. That's, that's, that's complete craziness is what it is. But that's what they're doing in these last days. Let me say also the end days church will try to love Christ and love the world at the same time. It never will work. And the end days church will be stuck between this dichotomy where they're trying to follow the culture but also trying to follow Christ at the same time and that never will work and they also will be marked by their attempt to lift up Jesus Christ without putting down sin and that never does work either let me say that we live in a different we live in a day now where there is literally no difference between the holy and the profane there is no difference between the man in the pew and the man in the bar today. There is no difference between the average teenager in the Sunday school class and the average teenager in the public school class anymore. There is no difference between the holy and the profane. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse number 26 says this, Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. And they put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and I am profane 
contained among them. Ezekiel 22, verse number 26. And can I tell you today that we live in a world now where churches are preaching this subjective morality. There is no dividing line anymore. There's, there's no black. There's no white. There's just all these different shades of gray that we live in. And can I tell you that is as far removed as Bible Christianity as an abortion is, my friend. I'm telling you, there is right. There is wrong. There is black. There is white. There is thou shalt not and thou shalt here in the Bible. And if you don't believe that, I don't know what Bible you're reading, but you're not reading this one that I have right here in my hand. Uh, can I tell you, God puts lines down. He says there's the wheat, there's the tares, there's the sheep, there's the goats, there's the lost, there's the saved. And can I tell you, that's how God sees the world. And if we don't see the world that way, then we're certainly not seeing it the way God sees it anymore. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 31 says this, And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For their mouth, for with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. Look what it says in verse number 20 of Revelation chapter 3. But it says there, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come in into him and will sup with him and he with me. You know what? You know what he's saying? He's not talking about salvation there in that verse. He's talking to the Laodicean church. He's saying, You you have all these things, you're rich with good, you have need of nothing. And the problem was that they had need of nothing. They didn't even need God, really. And they were cold and they were wretched and miserable, poor and blind and naked, and they were going through all their activity and everybody's there except God. God's outside standing at the door, knocking, saying, if you want me, I can come in there. But the problem is today is that you can run a church, you can run the average mega church and charismatic uh, bunch of nonsense. You can run all of that without God. And I think sometimes have allowed programs to relate to replace prayer and power with God and unction from heaven. And we, we've learned how to be professional clergymen and we've learned how to do all this ministry and all this activity and we've learned to do it without the power of the Holy Spirit upon our lives. That's the mark of the end days church, the Laodicean church. And oh friend, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's sad when governments go bad, but it's even sadder when the salt and light of the world becomes good for nothing needs to be cast out.